I am going to transform Gabon. I am unafraid to tackle the thorny issues. The Bongo dynasty must persevere. Those are the words of Gabonese President Ali Bongo Ondimba, who suffered a stroke in 2018 and is now eyeing a re-election in 2023. The ailing head of state says he came out of this ordeal with a much greater drive to make Gabon one of the most advanced nations in Africa inside of 10 years in areas such as training, health and the green economy. In this next report, we also look at why Ali Bongo has become more demanding. This video of a man walking to meet UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and this of French President Emmanuel Macron receiving the same man at the Elysee Palace and holding him so as not to fall elicited a lot of concern from netizens. Who is the man and why was he walking like that? Well, the mystery man is actually a head of state of a small Central African country called Gabon. His name is Ali Bongo Odimba. Ali Ben Bongo is a man of many faces. To some, he is a spoiled playboy prince who sees ruling the oil rich Gabon as his birthright. A one time funk singer who stepped into his father's shoes to continue his family's 50 year rule. To others, he's a reformer, a man who, they would argue, was voted into power democratically by the masses. But his recent ill health has pushed tensions to the surface in this country of just more than two million people. In January 2019, a group of soldiers tried and apparently failed to take control. Among their stated reasons was an attempt to restore democracy following the 2016 election, which Bongo narrowly won amid accusations of fraud and acts of violence. The way that Ali Bongo rules, in addition to a kind of dynastic style, which he got from his father, is through the PDG, the ruling party, which for many decades was the only legal party. And so you have now two generations, in some cases, three generations of Gabonese who have worked for this political party. And in a way, Ali Bongo and the Bongo dynasty are the masthead of this one-party system. Uh, much of what is called his following are basically people who have found themselves within the system, the PDG system. And uh, were he to lose, they'd be out of power. Whether this love of funk has remained is unknown. In his more recent years as president, Ali Bongo is said to enjoy jazz, bossa nova, and classical music. Ali Bongo served in his father's government as minister of defense a role he held for 10 years. Before that, his first appointment as Gabon's foreign minister in 1989 ended after three years because of a constitutional change requiring ministers to be over the age of 35. He was 32 at the time. Gabon's voters were still apparently unconvinced by the time of his father's death in 2009. But Ali Bongo re-emerged as a more reserved figure attempting to dress down and traveling to campaign in the provinces. In the end, Ali Bongo was elected, winning 42% of the votes. I would like to salute our valiant soldiers in Bangui, Central African Republic, to help our brother nation and reinforce our peacekeeping mission in the region, which Gabon has proudly been at the front of since the mantle of leadership of Michael Pax was assumed by our compatriot general, Jean-Félix Sakaga, on the 1st of August 2012. Jean Ping, the former African Union chairman and father to two of Bongo's sister's children, became the president's biggest rival. He had alleged fraud in one of the president's main strongholds. He won overall by the slimmest of margins, just 6,000 votes. Civil society backed up the allegations of rigging, which were denied by the ruling Gabonese Democratic Party, or the PDG. It is not the only criticism of Bongo's rule from rights groups. They allege the Bongo family turned Gabon into a kleptocratic regime, looting its natural resources, oil wealth and rainforests. While members of Gabon's political opposition have long accused family members of embezzling public money and running the country 
as their private property. Pascaline, uh, his half-sister, who has just been charged again with uh, these crimes, was sort of her father's um, uh, assistant, the one who knew all the accounts, who knew many of these are non-disclosed offshore trusts, uh, who helped him to negotiate the property holdings. Um, this is not a secret. This is not something Ali Bongo didn't know about. This is something Ali Bongo participated in. However, his supporters point to his role in attempting to diversify Gabon's oil-dependent economy in the face of declining oil reserves. Gabon's oil sector has accounted for 80% of exports, 45% of GDP, and 60% of fiscal revenue over the past five years, according to World Bank data. President Bongo has also used his own contacts to press harder for a stronger economy, traveling the world to find new investors and partners. Frustration over the lack of information surrounding his illness is thought to be one of the triggers behind January's attempted coup. It certainly suggests that some in Gabon, a country where a third of people live below the poverty line, would like to see change. Bongo asserts that the stroke will not deter him and will make a recovery eventually because he still feels like the right president for Gabon. For the moment, however, it seems power still lies with the president and his allies.